Okay, so we are back for our Lenten, actually, Easter reading, um, since we decided to continue just through Easter. Um, practical meditations for every day of the year, just through this Easter week now. So, we are on Easter Monday, and we will begin. This wonderful perfections of our Lord's glorified body in the first meditation, the same as in the preceding meditation. Second, ask for grace to comprehend the perfection of our Lord's glorified body. And to have our share in them with him on the great day of the resurrection. The immortal point one, the immortality and impassibility of our Lord's body. Consideration. As soon as our Lord soul was reunited to his body, the latter received the property of impassibility. This body, formerly subject to all human infirmities, cold, hunger, weariness, the pains, and sorrows of death, became absolutely impassable and immortal. Death shall have no more dominion over him. Application. How had Jesus as man merited such glorious gifts by his death and sufferings endured for his father's glory. We shall receive the same gift on the like conditions. Therefore, why should we so greatly fear death? Let us sanctify our sufferings by accepting them, as well as death itself, with entire resignation to the will of our Heavenly Father, offering them up in expiation for our sins and those of others after the example of our Divine Lord. The more we suffer with him, the larger our share in the wonderful perfections of his glorified body. Happy the Christian, happy the religious, who bears this in mind. How great will be his courage, how perfect his submission under, ver under every affliction, affections, and resolutions. Point two, the spirituality and agility of our Lord's glorified body. Consideration. A spiritual body is one that has spiritual properties, such as the power of penetrating matter, of passing at a single act of will from one place to another at whatever distance, how or in what way. We cannot comprehend, much less explain. Well, can I just say real quick, I've read a lot of near-death experiences and they all talk about being able to um, go where they want. As soon as they thought it, they were there. And um, and then when they came back into their body, obviously they couldn't. So, um, nevertheless, such were the properties of our Lord's glorified body. He proved that. He possessed that by appearing several times in the midst of of the disciples when the doors of the rooms in which they gathered together were shut and disappeared again without their being able to follow him. Application. Such again will be the perfection of the glorified bodies of the just after the resurrection. I shall one day partake of them. In the words of St. Paul, it is sown a natural body, it shall rise a spiritual body, provided that I endeavor to live a spiritual life. If by the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live as the Apostle St. Paul expresses it. Does my conscience testify that I have done this? Affections and Resolutions
point three. The lucidity of our Lord's glorified body. Consideration. Those that walk in the dark provide themselves with a light. For Jesus risen, there is no more darkness. His glorified body has its own light. The splendors of his divinity flowing from his soul to his body have made him more radiant than the sun at noonday. The apostles had once before seen something of this glory on the day of his transfiguration. That's what I was just thinking. Application. If I share the resurrection of the just, such will also be the radiance of my body. The more brilliant in proportion to the mortifications to which it has been subjected and lab and the labors it has endured for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. Colloquy with our Lord's co colloquy with God the Father in thanksgiving for these perfections of our Lord's glorified body. Wow, that was powerful. Reminded me all of all the NDEs I've listened to. Have a wonderful Easter week.